Hello and welcome to Knit with Hannah. I'm Hannah. I'm talking about the knits today that we are knitting for the knit log. We're talking about all sorts of other things as well. How can you adjust knitting patterns and change what you've already got or already knitted to suit you? If you always buy gloves and they just don't fit properly, your hands are too big or they're too small or the gloves are too tight or they're too loose or things like that, what is it you can do to knitting patterns rather than searching for the absolutely perfect knitting pattern how can you make it fit you before you even start knitting that would be perfect wouldn't it that would be perfect i am here with knitting now to help you knit with ease confidence and joy and that's what we want we want to do this easily we don't want it to over complicate our knitting process and what we want is to enjoy our knitting and really find calm and peace with it that's why we knit now first of all just have a think or actually go and have a scavenge what is out there that perhaps doesn't quite suit you right the simplest thing that it might not be the right color to a point where maybe the fingers are too short or nobody realizes that you've got really small hands things like that and then with hats and scarves and things too big too small too tall too short all of those things can be rectified quite simply too so let's do that today let's figure out how that can be we're going to do a bit of altering patterns and i want to make this as easy as possible i'm not going to sit here and show you stitch by stitch how we change the pattern and all that kind of thing I'm going to show you in the simplest form. It might be as simple as change it while you knit and make a note for when you knit it the next time. That's what we want. We want simplicity with this kind of knitting. We don't want it to get over complicated, too complex and sit there and spend hours trying to figure out how the knitting pattern changes. And then we're not knitting. And the whole point of knitting is that we knit. We like what comes out at the end of it. Let's make this as easy as possible. And of course, I'm also going to be talking about how you can alter these mitts in the knit along so that they fit you brilliantly. Having a finished item out of the knit along that you're going to use yourself, or indeed that you're going to give away and you know that it will fit them perfectly or suit them perfectly as well. Okay, let's start with the simplest, shall we? Change the yarn so it's that little bit different. We have one of the scarves here that I knitted probably in the first year or two of Knit with Hannah. I just found an interesting ball of changing yarn in a yarn shop and I thought, that's weird. Now, I can see grey all the way through this. I bet that's going to look really interesting when I knit with it. And I bet it will look more interesting with fewer stitches. So that's what I did. And tassels on the end, tassels on the end. So a thinner scarf rather than a fatter one. It's a shorter scarf for springtime rather than midwinter. And tassels on the end make it that little bit different as well so that is the simplest thing when it comes to fringe now these are demonstration and testing ones that I did for the fringe tutorial you will find those in my scarf playlist Ta -da! so we have multicolored fringe on that one and we have single colored fringe on that one and they're slightly different lengths they're different yarns and they either match the scarf or they contrast to the scarf so again this is identifiable if you have three or four children walking out of the house or even two and they go oh, that's my scarf no it isn't it's my scarf make it identifiable make it unique to the child who's picking it up or well, i know that's mine and i know that's yours and then my word does it make life easy so this is the kind of thing that you can do with a scarf, fringe, tassels, and I didn't pick it up, and I realised I should have, 
You can even put pockets on scarves. I've done that before. You can just knit a patch afterwards and sew three edges on. And they can be different colours. And then your mittens can go inside them. A yo-yo, skipping rope. You don't know what you're going to find in those pockets. It's just... It's just fun and it's different and it's unique. So that's the simplest thing. Add-ons afterwards. Add-ons afterwards with the mittens also include this kind of thing. Buttons. I love adding buttons to things. Now that is a trickler of buttons. And they completely contrast to the mitts themselves, but I've used the actual mitts colour to sew the button on. Doesn't that look great? So again, it's identifiable as belonging to a particular person. And you can also identify which one goes on which hand, which is quite useful. When you're wearing mitts, you'll realise that they start to mould to the hand and the outside might get a bit stretched and the inside might get a bit creased. You can switch which hands you wear them on so that doesn't happen so much. Or you can say that's what they are and they fit perfectly. So that's a knitted mitt for you. As any kind of mitt. <laughs> it's like a leather glove. The same thing will happen with them. Slightly stretched on the back of the hand and slightly creased and squashed on the inside. Now this one, um, let's find some more buttons. I have buttons on mug cozies. I love putting buttons on mug cozies. I use mug cozies. Actually, I seem to use them more when I'm using big coffee cups. Um, like takeaway coffee cups, that sort of thing. Um, I have a beautiful large insulated mug that I use for really large mugs of tea. Um, and I have these big ones for that. But there you go, that's a completely contrast. That is the pattern from Knitting Course Crafty Cables. Okay, that's that one. That's also from Crafty Cables. And that's got the same colour button on. But I actually sewed it shut. Instead of making the buttonhole part of it, I thought, oh, let's just sew it shut. So I did. And then it doesn't open and close. This one does open and close. And it's got contrast buttons on. And I really like them. I didn't have any yellow buttons, so I just found three of the same colour. <clears throat> and it gives it some interest. You can't exactly put a tassel on a mud cozy, can you? But you can put buttons on it. And again, it's a different pattern. It's a different colour. I just changed the cable inside it. It's the same size and length and pretty much the same as the Crafty Cables one. And then I just added the buttons. There you go. Um, now, also you can alter them with a little bit of embroidery. And that's what I've done with this one. You come inside the knit along, I'll show you how you do that. You can comp copy that completely. Um, or just go wild with it yourself. You're on YouTube, you're a creative. Go and watch some sewing videos. Or just get a sewing book out and you'll see there's so many options for you to do. Um, and you may be a complete creative already. Just go for it. Do it yourself. Um, that's what I love about this kind of thing. You can make it your own. And I mean, I've things I've shown you already, you will see. It's all different colours. I think that's very important to note. No matter what you knit. Make the colour right for who's receiving it, whether it's a gift or whether you're knitting it for yourself. You can pick out colours that match your favourite coat or scarf. You can pick out colours that suit your nephew's football team. Something like that. And you know that they're going to wear it, you know that they're going to love it. Um, I knitted a pink hat for my niece, because in that 18 months of her life, she was crazy about pink for some reason or other. So there you go. She had a pink hat and it suited her and she loved it and she wore it. I think that's the important thing too, isn't it? 
why give them something if they're not going to wear it? If they love it, if it's the right colour, if it's the right size, they are going to wear it. Then, make it your own in that respect too. All of these play mitts, they can be one colour. They can also be striped. Do that. Go for it. It uses up your leftovers and they go, oh wow, I've got a stripey pair. Yeah, cool. Now, this is something that I do when I'm just completely mad. But I'm not. I'm very sensible. <laughs> I put on, and this was two weeks in January when it was particularly cold. I put gloves on underneath a large pair of figureless mitts. These are boring gloves. They're practical gloves. They got little rubber dots on them so I can grip things. And why be boring? Put finger smiths over the top and they're colourful. Yay, I love it. And they're extra thick. So I was extra warm going out. So that's something you can do as well. If you are a knitter who likes knitting gloves, go for it. Particularly myself, I'm happy with makerless mitts and I always have a single pair of gloves and they just kind of go with everything if I ever need them. But like I've told you before, in this country, we don't really need them that much. So from first days of autumn, um, there were some days in September last year when I was putting out my fingerless mitts and I will wear them through to April at least. Some days I need them, sometimes some days I don't. How can we alter what we already have? How we can slightly change the pattern? Let's get into that, so shall we? We've looked at adding things, embellishments. You will notice with these cable mitts that we have cuffs and we have tops. You can shorten the cuff if you know you don't really have a very long wrist. You don't want it going up your coat very much. You can also lengthen that if you think oh, I'm going to wear that inside. I'd really like it to be much longer. Use the second ball of yarn that you, if you're in the UK, you can get it with a kit. There you go. You can have a much longer cuff. With this, you can say I have much, much longer fingers. I don't want them to be cold. Take that up. You can add another section of cabling so that the cuff is slightly higher. You can make the cuff at the top slightly taller. So your fingers are more covered up than mine are. I'm quite happy with that. That suits me quite happily. I'm, that suits me very well. I have fingerless mitts all over the place. As an example, this is another red pair. Like that. There you go. They are just a few millimetres longer when the cuff finish when the thumb finishes. But that's fine. And I think they are slightly longer going up the arm as well. You choose what you want. You can add more to the cuff. You can shorten the cuff. You can add more to the fingers. You can shorten the bit by the fingers. And think about that with hats and cowls and scarves and things as well. Cowls, they can be tall or they can be shorter and thinner. Depending on where you live, you may prefer them just to be something that's a bit snug around the neck for a breezy windy day and you just want that little bit of extra warmth without going full out and then making sure that you have roll neck jumpers all over the place. You say, I'll have a couple of cows and that'll be enough. Brilliant. Have a couple of them but maybe you want them longer or maybe you want them shorter. It's more than possible. With that kind of thing again you're going to have a repeating pattern very likely and those repeating patterns you can do less of them or you can do more. So 
but it can make a big, big difference. If you just take that initiative and maybe just make a note of it on your pattern, once you've printed it out or once it's sat there in your digital file, you can just scribble on it and say, don't do six repeats, do four. Something like that. You can also make a cowl and a scarf shorter. If you know you've knitted scarves before, you know you've knitted cowls before and you thought, oh God, this is way too long for me. Um, and I want it maybe for a 10 year old and that's going to be way too long for them. Reduce the length. Be brave enough to say, I'm going to do that. Not search around for another pattern. It's very, very possible you can do it. It's the creativity inside you that just kind of blossoms when you think about these kind of things and say, how can I change it? How can I make it my own? How can I do it so that it's just slightly different? And also change the yarn, changing the length, changing the width, changing the size, change the yarn. The original yarn, a lot of you will be knitting with the original yarn for these mittens. Very much. Watch the original video and near the end of it, where I'm telling you all about the knit along, I'm also sharing some different yarns that you could knit with. You may find that you can source some yarn in it. You can do what you like. You can do all sorts of things with yarn. So just make those mitts your own, make them different. Anything that you knit, you can be brave enough and just knit up a sample square first. Just say, will this work, won't it? What do I think? And then go ahead with a knit if it does work. It doesn't have to be a complex whole new pattern. You have to sit there and write to yourself. All of these ideas, once you've done them a little bit with accessories, you'll feel braver about doing it with jumpers as well. You feel a lot more confident in this kind of thing. How many times do you come across a jumper pattern? You'd love it for yourself, but you think, oh, I can't knit it that long, so knit it shorter. Don't let the knit, knit the sleeves that long, knit them shorter. All of those things, they can be relatively simple. Just have to sit there, make a decision about what you're going to do beforehand and then say maybe halfway through reassess and say is this working or not and how do I approach the next parts of that knit if it does work if it isn't working all of those things are quite doable and if you want to get even more complex then I have a book here that takes you through the exact process of this is a sample, this is a simple pattern, make it your own. All of these different things in here, simple cardigan, simple jumper, beautiful long fluffy jumper. You can make them your own, you can say, okay, these are the figures that I want, this is the length, that I want, that's how I want the sleeves, short, long, all of those things you can do in here and make it your own. And no matter what size of body you have, and you can make the larger items for yourself and make them your own. So we've done this, we've talked about all of the little changes you can make with the accessories. Do that first. Make them unique, make them identifiable, make them so you're going to want to use them and whoever you're gifting them to is going to want to use them as well. And please do join the knit along. I would love to have you inside. Um, we chat in the comments all the time. I'd love to see you inside and really get to know you even better. We can knit these mitts together. And remember, we have two patterns. It's not just the cable ones. It's the beginner ones as well. And like I said, I'll show you how to do all of the embellishments inside that's going to be the bonus for the second week all of the embellishment ideas will come up in the second week and we got the cabling in the first week so it's exciting look at that ah! come and join me come and join us we've already got quite um a group of knitters in there already and I mean, as I'm knitting this, there's half the kits left. I think there are probably going to be fewer of them left as this goes live. 
yeah. If you're in the UK, there may not be any left, but if there are some, go and grab them before they're all gone. <laughs> Um, and if you're worldwide, you can join, join us digitally and the knitting yarn suggestions, they are right there in that video from last week, all about what's inside the knit along and how you get there and what we're knitting and everything, all the details that you need. Okay, thank you for being here today. I will see you again soon. Bye for now. Links to the knit along is in the description. Happy knitting.